Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King 3 And today I'm going to be giving you part 6 of what if Naruto was neglected with Jashin sealed inside of him Remember to get this one to 100 likes as usual Share this to all of your friends in your social media platform And also, go ahead and check out the brand new episode of what if Naruto was neglected and lost everything over on anime making too and enjoy that guys and also stay in tune for a new episode over on anime king that i'm gonna be posting later on for you guys to enjoy and if you're new you heard that correctly i have three channels anime making anime making two and anime making three which i post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy so go ahead and click those or subscribe button and become part of the making family and turn on that bell notification as they posted. And thank you all for your help and your support. And yeah, without further ado, what is the begin this new episode? Start the intro. So the last spot we left off, Minato was downright furious as Jure had to calm him. 108 people in the past 4 years has been slaughtered in the village. He had his envoys on high patrol but nothing could be found. The weird thing about it was, it seems like all of them was committing suicide. But Minato knew that wasn't the case. The person that slaughtered the Uchiha clan was haunting him as notes were always left behind in the blood notes that were there to mock him some of them said that he was too late too slow that whatever it is cannot be stopped as it got Minato more and more furious he had to place a curfew up but it wasn't like people were coming on the streets anyway at night they refused to leave their homes he even lost one of his prominent jonings Aoba as a man worked at the IT department, he had found slaughtered the wounds, self-inflicted, that was the messed up part about it. That was what they got from the autopsy. Minota had no idea. Jerry decided to change the topic as he spoke about Minota's children. Menma had a girlfriend now. She was a part of the Yuga clan, Hinata Yuga. Some part of Minota thought that the girl wasn't real. Really, that much into his son. The politics between two of their clan would prove greatly for the Hayuga and grow the Hayuga clan. After all, he was a Hokage son, so being with him would be a big boost for their clan. Because the way she accepted to be his girlfriend easily, and the girl wasn't really flustered around him. Knowing the Hayuga, they kept themselves still, but Minato has been noticing signs, but he shrugged it off as his mind just being too overprotective for his boy. Mito was getting more and more like her mother every day. Her temper was just like her mother. As for Naruto, the boy has been not doing anything. Yes, he hasn't been doing any schoolwork, any projects or anything he should bring in. He simply ignored the teachers. He didn't do practice, he did absolutely nothing. He was failing the academy completely. But Minuto thought this was for the better. If he failed the exam, he would just stay back. And they would probably find a way to... Well, sort him out somehow. With that, Donzo was on edge as he couldn't get in contact with Naruto and whenever his roots made their way to see the boy. The boy told them that he was busy. Yes, he was doing something and he did not come with them. He knew that Naruto was the one slaughtering the people in the village. And if this keep up, he might slaughter the entire population. He needs to keep the boy under tighter leash as he was afraid that he might have created a monster that he couldn't stop. But he was always having a backup plan and he will find a way to calm this monster. Meanwhile Naruto was at school. Over the past years he has grown as he looked nothing like a 12 year old. As he was wearing clothes that Kushan ever bought for him. She had no idea where he got them but she never questioned him. As Naruto got up when his name was called, surprising the teachers, 
saying that usually he simply ignore everyone and didn't do anything at all. But then Minma, Hinata, as they started to told the teachers to move on, because it's a waste of time even calling on to him, nor to ignore them as he took on Mizuki. Mizuki tried his best to make it seem like he was holding back as he delivered a swift punch to Naruto. The fist smashed into Naruto's face with ease. But to Mizuki's surprise, the boy simply stood there. As Naruto moved forward and claw right into his pants leg, Mizuki winced in pain as Naruto flicked over him and grabbed his arm and snapped it. The man cried out bloody murder as Naruto tossed and threw him right into Iruka. He then went to attack, smashing his feet in Mizuki's face, breaking his nose. But main man, he had to jump in the way, stopping him along with Sasuke moving as well. As the Kayube and Jashin calmed him down. But Menma got up in his face, so he broke Menma's nose to his forehead as he slapped away Hinata. As a kunai was placed at his throat, with Aruka telling him to stop. As Naruto walked further into the kunai, as he started to cut his neck, Aruka dressed back as Naruto simply walked off. When he was at home, he was basically interrogated by his father about what he did. As Minato had to stop them from getting into a brawl, as he had to caught the chair that Menma had thrown towards Naruto. As Naruto simply went back to bed. So yeah guys, that was basically as well left off. You guys can switch across the place and check it out for yourself. So would you say begin this new episode? Minato was currently standing at the cell. He was behind the bars, looking inside. As Naruto was inside of the other, smaller cell. It was not small to an extent, but big enough for him to move around and do what he wanted. Minato was just standing here, his mind really hollowed, not really thinking about much. The attacks have been happening at night, as much as he tried to deny it. From what he heard, it shocked him, as Naruto was able to broke Mizuki's arm. Mizuki was a chunin, so it was either a surprise near or something like that. Naruto, who hasn't received any training, that was the confusing part. He didn't really understand that. And the boy was showing strength. That was above Jenin. But Naruto was kept sealed. Every night. It opened at morning for him to go to school. And then when he came back it closed. Minato looked towards his wrist. There was a circle. With three other circles inside of that. Miniature ones. It was a locking seal for the cage. And it was perfectly intact. So there is no way that Naruto was committing these murders. As much as he might tell him to check otherwise. There was no possible way, so there was no evidence. But still, the boy was hiding something from him. Well, he guessed the boy has been for a long time now. Considering that he never had a relationship with him as a father. And he had basically disowned him. Not in a literal sense, but in a way. To don't write ignoring him. And basically act like he wasn't a part of their family. He has never even eaten with them. He saw his son getting beaten by the civilians and he just walked away. The boy must hate him. But he did all of this to protect Minma and Mito. You had to sacrifice one to save many. And that was what he did in the situation. That is what anyone else would do. Most fathers, he kept on telling himself to make sure he was doing the right thing. At least he hoped. He knew it was hard on Kushina, who has always been a loving person. But Naruto tried to kill them when he was younger. And seeing that they couldn't find anything wrong with the seal, they had to say that it was him. The man sighed as he simply turned his head. At the same time at the hospital, Mizuki groaned. As he released a sigh, the sedative were keeping him calm. As he felt himself drifting off his sleep. But all he could think about now was revenge. The boy had broken his arm in three places. First, when he snapped it and then yank and then twirl him. Mizuki was furious. The moment he got out of here, he was going to kill that brat. He had enough. He was one of the many that hated Naruto that despised him for just because he was contained in Ninetale Fox. After all, the Hokage did not care about him. So the investigation about his death wouldn't be so much despite him being the Hokage's son. Mizuki was going to take great pleasure out of wringing that little brat's neck. Suddenly, he jumped as he heard a peck. It startled him for a moment there. He looked towards the window to see a crow 
Mizuki was confused. These crows weren't coming in this region. It pecked at the window. He waved his unbroken arm to try and make the thing move away. But it kept on pecking at the window. It kept on pecking. Mizuki started to get a bit alarmed. If he kept that up, it might break the glass. It kept on pecking. Suddenly, the crow eyes snapped towards him. Shocking the hell out of Mizuki. The thing seemed to steer into Zetora's soul. As Mizuki lay there and watched, as the crow kept on looking at him, tilting its head, Mizuki felt his heart in his chest stop for a moment when he saw the crow head was not stopping. It kept on turning and turning and turning. The man felt his bones quake in fear. Suddenly, the door opened up as he jumped, accidentally fallen out of bed. The nurse looked at him. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. Mizuki winks on the ground as he hurt up his arm. No, it's my fault, he said. Are you okay, Ninja San? She asked. Mizuki nodded. Thank you for your assistance, he said, as she helped him up. You should get some rest. It will take a week or two for that to probably heal up. As she gave him a pleasant smile, he smiled back. Thank you, he said. As he lay back down the bed, as she went back out, getting my final wave. He knew his job here. As Mizuki looked around, over the past years he has been unable to get anything that was remotely good to give to Lord Uruchimaru. Uruchimaru would accept him in his ranks full fold if he had something from Konoha that was necessary in a degree. His mind was on the forbidden throne. But that was hard to obtain. Mizuki sighed. He heard the door open again as he wondered what the nurse wanted before something came rolling in the room. A wheel? He was confused. It looked like a wheel that rolled in. He looked over his bed only for him to scream. A rather girlish scream. His body was already tense after seeing the crow and this just scared the shit out of him despite being a trained shinobi it scared him to no end because on the ground was a nurse well not entirely her her head her face scrunched up in a painful expression Mizuki pulled himself up winced as his arm got hurt up he looked around as he made his way towards the door only to be stopped by a black mass of darkness that seemed to swallow his escape up. Mizuki's heart started to beat rapidly. He then heard pecking. What are you? He said as he saw the crow pecking before it break its beak right to the window. It then flopped down right on his bed. It then started to laugh. Mizuki stepped back into the darkness as you need to get the hell out of here. Want to feel something brush across the back of his neck. He leaped back towards where the crow was, stuck in the middle, having nowhere to go. He saw her arm. A skeleton arm came from the darkness. Something then ripped into his back as he jumped back in pain, breaking many things in the room. He then saw it, what it was, a hand had came out of the crow mouth. The crow opened its mouth wider and wider and wider until a body was pulled right out of it. The body was showed in a black mass. Nothing but darkness, but Mizuki saw the eyes. The eyes that seemed to steer into his very soul. The face. It was him. You. I've always wanted to kill you, said Naruto. I guess this is more than perfect enough, he said. How? How? How did you? Mizuki couldn't find the proper words. He was too afraid. As Naruto started to laugh. Time skip. As Minato was currently standing in the hospital room, his top analysis team was there as they were checking over the place. Sir, as you can see, the enemy had broken through this window. A man with light purple here said as he looked over to the window that Minato was looking at, but it seemed to be more than one because from the trajectory where the blood is splashed from, the nurse was attacked outside. Minuto nodded as he turned towards the body. It hadn't been moved as he wanted to see how the crime scene was set up. He wanted to see if something had been left behind for him. From this killer 
That is why he told them to call him the moment it happened again. Yes, because he knew it would. Mizuki was on the wall. His arms painted the wall by nails. The nails were literally dried into his arms, pinning him up like a sacrifice. His throat was cut deep. There was a cross in his chest that was turned upside and down. Blood flowing as it was dry by now. Minuto cleansed his fists. Whoever this was, this person was dark. Not in the literal sense, but dark to do something like this. As Mizuki fingernails had been ripped out, post boredom, said the analyst. And it was when he was alive. His eyes had been ripped out of their socket. His nose had been carved off. And no one heard anything, asked Minato. No book, sama it was in the morning when the shift duty came to change out the nurses. He was found like this. Minuta slammed his fist into the wall, losing his composure when he saw the blood splattered in the giant wall in front of him. Too slow again. Flash. The blood was written. The purse was outright mocking him again. Minuta was now certain that this was not Naruto. After all, he got the time of death, judging from the blood, how oh, still it was, and the body. And he was at Naruto's cell last night and the boy was sleeping peacefully. So this indeed was not Naruto. So that was a lost cause right there. And if it wasn't him, who the hell was it? Meanwhile, it was rather early in the morning. So it wasn't strange that Hinata was the only one in the class. She had arrived rather early because she was having an inner turmoil. Something was bothering her. Inata has always been the one to follow rules. Her mother always told her to dress and to act a certain way as a Hayuka. Her mother was mostly focused on little Hanabi Chan now. She was a young girl so she needed more attention. Not that she mind that she cared about her sister but because of their ways she couldn't show too much emotion. Her mother had been sick, really really sick. As her mother Hitomi and Kushina were good friends. Kushina had to beg and plead for Snadi to come back to the village to help Hitomi. As Kushina was happy that Hitomi was now back to normal. As Snadi had healed her, it was difficult because she had organ failures. She had had a transplant, a sickness, a rare sickness. But the girl was back to normal now, and Kushina had her friend once again. Hinata was also happy. That is why she was so grateful to Kushina. That is why she felt terrible at what she was doing. She felt awful. She had listened to her father every word, every quote. She trained. She sealed away her emotion as best as she could. Her father was the one along with the clan heads, saying that she should start dating Minma. It would look good for the clan. To bolster the Hayugas even more. Know that the Uchiha's were wiped out. They were the most pulseless clan in Kanoha. And it wasn't even a false statement. It was correct. So Dayton Minma was a way to bolster their clan even more. It's not that she hates them. But it's just that he liked her more than she liked him. She didn't have those strong feelings for him. But she was going to listen to her father. She was going to do her best as her mother was happy whenever she was with Minma as well, seeing that he was a good responsible boy. But yet she didn't have strong feelings for him, not at all. It's not that she liked anyone else, but the reason for her inner turmoil was him. Having someone hit you, you should be really angry at them, but Hinata didn't know what the hell was wrong with her. She wasn't angry. She, she liked him. Her mind must be messed up in somewhere or somehow. But she always saw him. He was a rule breaker. He didn't listen to no one. No one tell him what to do. He didn't care. He spoke the way he wanted. He did what he wanted. Being raised in a family, she always had to act a certain way. To see someone breaking rules like that. Minmo was always doing whatever his father said. He was a good boy. But Naruto on the other hand, he was dangerous. He was bad. And for some reason, it made her attracted to him. And she hated herself for it. She hated every fiber of her being for it. 
and she didn't know how the hell she could change it. That is why she was so early this morning. Because she headed out, her mind was too full to stay in bed. She could barely sleep. And she's been constantly thinking about him. And from him diverting her attack yesterday and hitting her, it made her mind even more obsessed about him. And she kept on cursing herself. She didn't know how she could stop these damn feelings that she was feeling. She released a sigh. A part of her mind knew why she was here because he was always early. She saw where he slept. She saw where he was. That was another thing. He went through so much and yet he still didn't give a crap about it. Something about their, that attitude of his just got to her in a way that she never expected. As to her surprise, well, she shouldn't be surprised because she knew he arrived to school early because he didn't like to stay in that place. After all, no one would. Minma had shown her where he resides and it wasn't pleasant. It was basically a cage, a prison. Big enough for him to survive and live, but it was still a prison and he didn't have free room like everyone else. The door opened up. The last person who she wanted to see stepped inside. As he was wearing that black vest of his, a gray shirt underneath. It was a short sleeve gray shirt. The black vest was long. Black pants like looked like Anvu style with black boots. He had glasses on his face. Dark shades as she wondered. Where did he got those? She never saw him wear them before. She shook her head. Why should she even care about him? Meanwhile, a small smile came on Ruta's face. Oh, Naruto can said Jashin. Yeah, said Naruto. No one's around said Akayube. To cause him immense pain, just to make him suffer for throwing that chair at you last night. Why don't you kill his girlfriend, said Jashin. Naruto placed a hand behind him as he stepped towards Hinata. His fingers moving behind him a bit, black veins running through them. He paused right in front of her. She looked up at him, confused. She never expected him to approach her like that. Her stern attitude kicked in. The place is clear, said the Kayube, as she spread out her senses through him. You should be apologizing, he had said, slapping her ears like that. If I wanted to, I could have you thrown into jail for what you did to me. He said nothing as he stepped closer to her. She backed away a bit. What are you doing, she said. The fingernails. Naruto fingernails extended, far past the human rate. Stop, said the Kyube. What's wrong, said Naruto. Don't kill her. Is someone coming here to ask? No, it's not that. Do you feel that, Jashin, the Kyube ax? Oh, yes, said Jashin. Jashin was a deviant of lust, and she could feel it very well. You see, Naruto kun it's quite surprising about this one. She has lust for you. Linked her emotions, they are so strong. Huh. Well, girls always love the bad boy. So, said Naruto. Well, the best way to hurt Minma might not be killing her. Hmm. Do you get where I'm going with this, said Jashin? As a smile came in Naruto's face. He loves her, doesn't he? Of course he does, said Akayube. You see how protective he is of her. So, if I manage to take her away and screw her, said Jashin, finish next sentence for Naruto. But I don't feel anything for her, said Naruto. You don't have to. After all, you don't care about any other female, do you? You're nothing but pawns to you, right, Jashin said. Of course, said Naruto. You're the only two that matter to me. Yes, Naruto kun said Jashin. Well, she would be a great tool to use just to make Menma suffer. After all, I never thought this little bitch would be obsessed about you. She was always acting against you, always saying that you disgust her as well. You sure it wouldn't be better for me to just kill her, said Naruto. No, no. It's better if we use her. She can be a good pawn to make Menma suffer. After all, you're the alpha male, Naruto kun all of them are beta males. As Naruto nodded, he stepped closer, causing Neta to blush. Her hand came up as she lashed out at him, but he grabbed it. Her other hand came up as she lashed out, but he grabbed it. Calm down. I'm not gonna hurt you, said Naruto. 
as his voice sent shivers down her spine. He moved closer as he licked her face. He let the eyes wide. What? Get off me, she said. You taste nice, he said to her. Her blush increased. Let go of me. Do you know what you're doing? I could have you thrown into prison. Or better yet, killed. This fragrance, it smells nice. You, you like my fragrance, she said. Yes. Hasn't anyone told you that before? Men must have told you, said Naruto. After all, he is your boyfriend. As Naruto looked over her, despite the glasses, she could tell that his eyes are roaming over her entire body. It made her feel vulnerable and helpless to do anything. But she didn't hate it. Why did she hate it? What the hell was wrong with her? Just as I thought. She wants a bad boy to ruffle her feathers. The sweet little white dove, as you say. Say Jashin. To have the dark swan come and take her from the other little white dove. Nurtakan. Keep doing what you're doing, said the Kayube. It seems like he's coming. What do you want from me, Hinata said. Oh, nothing, said Naruto. Can't I just admire you? No, you can't. So stop admiring me, she said to him. And who told you you have any control over me? You can't tell me what to do, said Naruto. I do what the hell I want. There again, she felt its shiver run down her spine. Just get, get, get away from me, she said. Barely stand out the words. I told you. As he came closer, she was frozen. Is, is he going to kiss me? She wondered to herself. You cannot. Tell me what to do. Get away from her, a voice screamed. As Naruto turned and stepped away, a fist passing over his head. Hinata barely recognized the fist as her mind was so foggy. You know, attacking me like this is just. So if I were to do something like per se. Naruto moved in so quickly, Minma was caught off guard. He grabbed Minma by the shirt and tossed him over his head. BAM! Minma smashed right through the decks beside him. He groaned on the ground. He slowly picked himself up. I'm gonna kill you, he said. Naruto brought his foot down and stomped right into Minma's stomach. He let her mind snap back in focus as she heard other people coming. She moved and pushed Naruto out of the way. Stop it! Get away from him, she said. Minmakan, are you okay? She asked. Yeah. Did he hurt you, Hinata? Said Minma as he started to reach into his pouch for a kunai. No, I'm fine, she said to him. Still, he's gonna pay, said Minma as he gripped the kunai tight. As Naruto's eyes started to shrink, as the bloodlust was getting keen and so thin, you could literally see the radiant of darkness seeping from his fingers. Hinata noticed the veins pulsing through his fingertips. As Minma was about to move, she grabbed his shoulder. Stop, she said. The door then opened to show Sasuke and Mito, some other students behind them. As everyone froze. What's going on, said Mito. I'm finally teaching him a lesson, said Minma. As he moved Hinata's arm off his shoulder. As he rushed forward to the kunai. Naruto paused as he did not move a single muscle. What the hell is he doing? Isn't he gonna dodge? Minma thought to himself. At the last moment, Mito ran forward. Minma stopped, she said. But Minma stopped himself. The kunai inches away from Naruto's throat. He never looked at him. He wasn't even gonna stop him. Once again, she felt something run down her spine. How can he just stood there in the face of danger and allow Minma to do what he want? What? What the hell was happening to her? Why did she care? As her breath started to come out ragged, he simply smiled at Kuna and pressed up against his throat. Do you want to die, Minma asked. Even if I did want to die, you didn't have the resolve to let it happen, said Naruto. But unlike you, Minma, I don't hesitate. His hand then came up. Stop it, a voice said. As the both of them turned, as Aruka was standing at the door. Whatever is going on here, stop it immediately. Minma pulled away the kunai so fast. As to be seen killing a comrade would be really bad. As he placed in his pouch. What the hell is going on? If you weren't so damn late, you would have found out, said Naruto. Aruka, I snap. What did you just say to me? 
as he marched towards Naruto. Naruto did not move as he showed no sense of fear, no hesitation. He did not start to bite her lip as she watched him, showing no fear towards a teacher that came bearing down on him. Aruka, stop right inches away from Naruto. I suggest you watch your tone, boy, if you know what's good for you. And tell me, Aruka, said Naruto, not calling him sensei or anything. What the hell are you gonna do? Aruka fist clenched. His knuckles could be heard popping. Stop it! As Naruto turned his head, Stop disrespecting teacher like that, said Mito. And stop fighting Menma. And stop causing problems, she said to him. As Naruto moved, snap! He snapped her neck. Menma's eyes went wide. Sister, he screamed! Naruto pulled Menma back towards him by grabbing his hand and slicing his head off with his fingernails. Aruka came as Naruto jumped over him and ripped his hand right through his skull. Get to your seat! As Naruto snapped back into reality. Of course, that wasn't real. Well, that was what you want to do. But he did not. Get to your seat now, Aruka said. As Naruto simply walked back up the small steps, making his way to his seat on the top row, where he sat alone. As the class quieted down Hinata, forced herself not to glance up at him. She didn't know what the hell was wrong with her or what this feeling was, but she had to find somewhere to get rid of it. As Menma was beside her, he placed a hand on her hand. There he was, always trying to comfort her. As it made her like him less. What the hell was wrong with her? He was just so sweet, he was nice. And yet she hated that, why? She didn't know and she couldn't explain. On the other hand, Menmo was trying to use her hand to calm himself, as he was furious. He trained his entire life, pushing himself so that one day he can might surpass his father, and yet he's been tossed around by this, this, this waste of space, this monster who didn't have enough strength to do anything. He couldn't understand why that was happening, and he needed to find out where did he get that strength from. And he needed to stop hesitating, although it would have been bad if he had killed him. His father would have still been angry at his mother, would have probably looked at him differently, knowing that he took his own brother's life. But that thing was not his brother, he was just a monster in human clothing. Aruka then went on to explain to them that today was the last day, as he would miss some of them, he said in his mind. On the outward, he said all of them, as he didn't miss Naruto at all and he didn't want to miss him. But he wasn't so sure that boy would pass the exam, but he was under strict orders to make sure that he passed, the Hokage had told him. It seems that the Hokage had a plan with Naruto. Something had changed, he didn't know what, because it didn't seem like the Hokage wanted him to pass before, but now, he wanted him to pass. But the Hokage told him if Naruto wasn't ready, he should fail him. But if he show some sort of, well, ability to pass, like perform one of the Jutsus, and he failed maybe the other one, he should let him pass. As he had no idea why the Hokage wanted this, but it changed after what happened with Mizuki. He simply shrugged. Names were called one by one as Naruto ignored all of them. Some of them came back with frowns, some of them came back with smiles. As some of them didn't pass, they would have to retake the test next year and stay back in the academy. As Naruto's name was called, he made his way down the hall. As he wondered, Haruka didn't say anything about Mizuki. He was probably trying to let the kids left the academy on a high note, not to want him to know about their gruesome death that took place while he was asleep. He chuckled to himself. As he made his way, Aruka was in the room but he wasn't alone. There was a woman in there as well. As she had red eyes, black hair as she looked at him. He didn't hear anything about this while well, he wasn't really paying attention. He was talking to Mikayube and Jashin. Standing there, Aruka looked at him. You shouldn't even be taking this test. If it was up to me, you wouldn't be even taking this test. You wouldn't even be given a chance to graduate with the academy. In the past couple of years, you have done nothing. You only took part once in the exam to test your skills to see where you are from the beginning. We don't even know your skill rate because you never fought in the first place. You haven't done one single sheet assignment, nothing at all. Why do you think you deserve to take this test, Aruka asked. The woman that was sitting there was Kurna Iwai, recent joining and she was going to be taking a team this year. As she waited for the boy to reply, she knew about him of course, everyone did. But to her surprise, he did not say anything. 
Instead, he looks through the window, completely ignoring Aruka. Aruka just sighed, as this seemed to be a daily basis. But she had to get out of her seat. Your sensei is talking to you, she said, as she placed her hand on her shoulder. She froze. Kurna didn't know what it was. But her heart, her entire being got cold. She stepped away from him. Kurnai, Kurnai san, are you okay? Aruka asked. She took a deep breath. Yes, I, I'm fine, she said. What must I do, said Naruto. Alright then, let's get this over with. You will be need to perform a single transformation and the Shadow Clone Jutsu. If you do that, you will be able to pass a graduation test. Despite your lack of grades. As Naruto held his hand up, he went through the hand signs. As Aruka noticed them, they were precise and fast. This boy never paid attention in his class before. So, this was confusing. But the thing was, Aruka didn't feel chakra when Naruto stopped. There was a shimmer. Aruka noticed black smoke. Before a clone materialized, it wasn't the usual poof. Black smoke was the thing that dissipated after the clone arrived. As Naruto turned his head towards the clone, before he poked him, Aruka's eyes went wide. It, is that a physical clone? How did you... The clone then went through Hansai. Precise movements before it changed. It did not poof its body grow, twisting and turning its face changing into Aruka. As Naruto jumped up and smacked his fist in the clone's face, as it burst into black smoke. The smoke seemed to dissipate, but what they didn't see is that the small, tiny spectacles travel back into Naruto's body. Naruto walked forward as he picked up one of the headbands. So, is that all he asked? Yeah, 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 yes, said Aruka. As Naruto walked out, Aruka wanted to ask more, but his mind was shocked. Aruka, what was that? Kurnai said. Confused herself in all of her time of being a shinobi, she never saw a transformation like that before. That wasn't a hinge, was it? She asked. I believe not, but I don't know myself, Aruka said. As he was confused, Naruto made his way back in the class. Minma gritted his teeth when he saw. Naruto holding on to the headband. He didn't have a tire on his waist or anything. He was holding on to the cloth and the thing was dragging on the ground. The headband symbol was dragging on the dirt. Like he was disrespecting Konoha. Minma moved to say something to Mito. Place hand in front of him. Stop getting in battles with him. It's not right, she said. He grumbled something under his breath. She grabbed him by the shark roughly. What was that? She said. Nothing, he said. I'm only looking out for you, so stop doing foolishness. I don't want you to get hurt. He scoffed. Hurt? Me? You think him can hurt me? Asked Minma. She shook her head. Calm down, Minma. Said Hinata. As she placed hand on his shoulder, he smiled. Thanks, he said. You're always there for me. Thank you. No problem, she told him. As Naruto simply went to his seat, as he placed the headband in Dex, it seemed like he was scorning it. He did not let it touch his skin at all. Time skip, as the students were leaving. Hinata glanced back towards him as he was just sitting there. He was not getting up. Everyone had vacated the class. Hinata, come on, said Minma. Come in, she said. As she glanced, he turned towards her as he lowered the sunglasses as he smiled. She quickly exited the class. She stopped at the hallway as she placed hand to her heart. What the hell is wrong with me? She thought to herself. Hinata, what's wrong? Oh, it's nothing. I'm fine. She said. Come on, let's go. A moment later, Naruto walked out. It seems you guys are right. Did you ever doubt us? Asked Jashin. Of course not, said Naruto. But I'm surprised. I thought all of them hate my guts. Well, you see, Nurtakan. Someone like her who has grown up in a place where there is nothing but focus, intense learning, where she has to follow the rules, or it wouldn't be good for her. So, she wants to find a way to rebel. Her mind, her body, 
is just reacting to this feeling. And you're the baddest of them all, Nurtakan. And given the way that you act, it just draw her towards you. She's like a cute little feather. And you're like that giant beast who is coming to extract everything from her and leave her nothing but a crumble of shell of her form herself when you're done with her. Oh, and it's going to be wonderful, said Jashin. I want you to take the most pleasure out of getting with her. Just to make men must suffer, she said. As Nurta smiled to himself, he stepped out of the academy. The moment he did snarls, glares, or sent his way by the parents of the students. He told me, glance up from hugging Hinata. As she saw the boy standing there, she glanced towards Kushna, who was hugging her two children. As Minma refused to be treated like this. He then paused as he heard the whispers. He then glanced. Minma smirked to himself. He had something that that demon didn't have. His mother love and respect. He wrapped his armor on his mother's waist. As he looked up. Thanks for being there for me, mom, he said. She looked at him. Of course I will. I'm your mom, she said. As Mito looked across, she then looked back towards Naruto. He was doing this despite him. But she wouldn't go against Minma. He was her brother. He was there. That thing over there. As she didn't know what to think of him. They never really thought before. She didn't know how she was able to gather the courage to speak to him. And told him to go to his seat. She thought he was going to blow her off. But Aruka was the one that told him to go to his seat. Kushina glanced forward. As Naruto was walking. The murmurs got louder. Look at it. Huh. I can't believe it became a shinobi. Well. It will probably go out there and die. That will be good for all of us. Kushina felt her heart. Shaking a bit. As she tried to steal it as much as she can. She has already gone wrong with him. The things that she saw happened and did nothing. She was sure that he hated and despised her. She was broken from her thoughts when he started to laugh. His laughter echoing. His laughter sounding dark and wicked. Freezing everyone in their tracks. As all of their eyes set upon him. His red eyes seemed to be glowing. The ear felt ominous and thick. And dark. Their very soul seemed to shiver a bit at the laughter that he was releasing. His eyes seemed to steer into each of their souls. Before he just left. And like that everything returned back to normal. Time skip. And why do you think I will be best for this? Ask Kakashi. Because you're the one I trust the most Kakashi. I need you to pass him no matter what. I've showed you the team listen already. And you're going to be sensei. I need you to pass him. I need you to find out everything that he knows. And somehow, I don't know how it's going to be possible, but I need you to find a way to bring him in the favor of Konoha. But sir, Kagashi, he hates the village. He hates everything it stands for after his past. Kagashi not as he knew that. But how am I going to... I don't know, Kagashi. But try to find a way on the mission to somehow... I'm not saying bonded, but... Try to find a way to find out what he's capable of and what he's hiding. But I thought you already ruled him out as a suspect. Well, not, not of the murders, Kagashi, but he was able to take down Mizuki. And the man died a day after, but that's not the thing. Naruto has never been trained by either me, Jiraiya, or anyone else, as far as I'm aware of. He has always been in that cell, the time records have been shown. So there's no way that he can come out without my permission. Because, as Minato showed Kakashi the seal on his arm, as you can see, it's activity right now. So I don't know how he's gotten that stronger. I have a theory that the Kayube is the one that has been training him, but how, I don't know. So that is why I want you to find out his secrets and find out how does he think. Inuichi, I tried his best, but he's still hiding something. Even from Inuichi, he was able to completely diverse to show that he's not a threat but I know that he's hiding something Kakashi so I need you to pass him and I need to watch him see what he does on missions when the time comes for you to take on dangerous missions like C-Ranks to face off against Bandit see how he fights see how he attacks see if he hesitates to kill Kakashi nodded 
I'll do it, he said. As Myrtle smiled, I know I can count on you, he said to him. Meanwhile, in Naruto's mind skip, as Naruto was a moving, the ground below him was lava. Hot, boiling lava. A representation of his mind could be real on how he wanted it. If he wanted to feel pain, he could have. If he wanted to burn, he could. If he wanted to be tormented, he could. After all, the Kyube and Jashin had tormented his mind for years. They had made him understand what pain feel like. So to make him be ready for the world. And he accepted everything they say without a second guessing. Because there was no one else that was out here that made right for him except for them. The lava was burning the sole of his feet, but yet still he did not move. He then held out his hand in front of him. Darkness release. Receptacle of the void, he said. The veins on his hands pulse as darkness shoot from his fingertips, catching the giant fireball sent his way by the Kyube. As the darkness swallowed the entire technique, he then raised the other arm as the darkness emerged and fire out the fireball, but this time it had a dose of darkness around it like a cloud. The Kyube raised her tail as she smacked it into the ground. The lava spew out and spread everywhere. She then slammed her hand together as she opened her mouth wide to the sky before she fired a beam towards him that traveled tremendously fast. Darkness release, judgment, said Naruto. As the attack slammed into his palm, it was absorbed into him. It was absorbed into his left hand. His right hand then became encompassed in black flames. As the flames burned hot and bright before he shot it at the Kayube. She fanned her tails. Tails that were strong enough to bring down mountains as they were able to douse the flame though. As Naruto then started to fall, he was caught as Jashin picked him up by his shirt. She was hovering in the air as she held on to him. Nice work Naruto Kan, she said. As she brought him over towards the soil, his feet were burned black. As they started to heal, he was wearing a shirt as there were laceration marks and slashes all over his body. As his wounds started to heal, you've done wonderful today, passing your previous record. As she licked her lips, you're growing into the fine man I wanted to be. Well, I can't justify you as a man anymore. You're beyond that. And when you're ready, you will be my ultimate champion, she said. As Naruto fell asleep in her embrace, the Kyuubi then walked over. You're really starting to care about him. Don't you? She asked. Jashin looked up before looking back down. What the hell was she talking about? Neither of them knew that she was just using him. Because when Naruto finally assent to what she wanted, she would get what she ever wanted. What she always wanted, something that nothing could grant her, no one, not even the sacrifice that was given to her. But Naruto would give that to her, and none of them knew. But why did she feel strange saying that, like she didn't want to do it? She couldn't be caring about this human, correct? She was a being of death and malice and lust. A being that most couldn't even comprehend. Of course she did not care, as she looked down towards his peaceful sleeping face. So why did it feel so strange, she thought to herself. Time skip. The next day, as all of them were in the class gathered, Iruka looked around the room. Alright, he said, settle down, settle down. Hinata, look tired. Are you sure you're okay, asked Minma. Yeah, I'm fine, she said. Just didn't get much time to sleep last night. It was because her mind was bothering her. She kept on thinking about him. When she finally got some sleep, she was woken up by her sister telling her it was time for school. Her sister was young and she didn't know that she needed a rest, so she woke up rather early. She sighed. I'm fine, she said. She wiped the sleep away from her eyes that were trying to catch back to her. Okay, said Menma. Alright, now let's go through the listings, said Aruka as he started to call Team 1 to 5. Before he reached towards Team 6. Team 6 will be consist of Mito, Namikaze, Minma Namikaze, and Ami, Uzuki. 
as Min Mo looked down as Omi smiled at him. He knew Omi quite well. Her sister was his mother's student in the past. That was Yujiro Uzuki. She came by his house many times. But she was lacking in the ninja department. She was close to dead last, but that was how it was set up. Well, he didn't know that. Being the best in the class, and his sister being relatively second best or at the top when it comes to Hinata, with the almost dead last. Yes, that is how the team was set up to balance it out. Now for Team 7, we have Sasuke Uchiha, Sakura Haruno, and Naruto Namikaze. A soccer squeal as Ino slammed her head to the table. Damn it. Not even Minma? Or Sasuke? Well, Minma was a lost cause seeing that he was with Hinata and no one could really well, go against her. Now for Team 8, Hinata Hayuga, Shino Aburami, and Kiba Inuzaka. Team 9 is still in circulation. For Team 10, Ino Yamanaka, Cho Jakimichi, and Shikamaru Nara. As a groan could be heard from Ino as he went down the list the rest of them. As for your senses, Team 6, your sensei will be Yamato Seito. Team 7, Kakashi Atiki. Team 8, Kurna Iwai. And Team 8, Asuma Saratobi. Well, Nurtakan, it's time for you to start the embark on missions outside the village. Now things are gonna be fun, said Jashin. But guys, it'll be end episode right here. If you watch this part, you don't do like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on the bell notification to stay posted. But more for now, see you guys soon. Peace.